We're now moving on to the section on chemical equilibrium and the first lecture will be about the equilibrium constant. By the end of this lecture you should be able to explain what is meant by the term dynamic equilibrium and you should be able to calculate the equilibrium constant K and use it to predict the position of equilibrium and or calculate the concentration of species at equilibrium. During the higher course, you were introduced to the concept of equilibrium, or as it's more properly called, dynamic equilibrium. In this example here, the reactants A and B are reacting to produce two moles of C and D. But at the same time, C and D are reacting together to produce A and B. At equilibrium, or dynamic equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, so that the concentration of the reactants and the products are no longer changing. Now, in higher, we also learned how you could manipulate the position of the equilibrium, normally in order to increase the concentration of the products. And depending on the particular reaction, you could do this by changing the temperature, the pressure, or by adding or removing a constant uh, reactant or product. Now, at advanced higher, the first thing we're going to learn is that we can actually quantitatively measure the position of the equilibrium using something called the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is given the symbol capital K and you must use a capital K, not a small k. A small k stands for kilo, as in kilogram, kilometre, etc. It must be a capital K. And basically it's given by the concentration of the products. Remember the square bracket means the concentration. Divided by the concentration of the reactants. In this particular example, the expression of the equilibrium constant would be given by this. So it's the concentration of the products, and because it's 2C, then it's concentration of C squared. If it was 3C, it would be concentration of C cubed. So C squared times the concentration of D divided by the concentration of A times the concentration of B. That gives you a value of the equilibrium constant for this equation. Now, if k has got a value greater than 1, that means the concentration of products is higher than the concentration of the reactants. Whereas if k is less than 1, that tells you that the concentration of the reactants is higher than the concentration of the products. So by looking at the value of k, you have some idea if the equilibrium lies to the left favouring the reactants, or to the right, favouring the products. The value of the equilibrium constant can vary over a huge number of orders of magnitude. Take this reaction, this reversible reaction for example. So the expression for the equilibrium coefficient would be HF squared divided by concentration of hydrogen times concentration of fluorine. And if you do that calculation at equilibrium, you get a value of 1 times 10 to the 47. So it's got a very, very high equilibrium constant. And that's because the concentration of HF is so high. So this, in this particular reaction, equilibrium lies way over to the right hand side and you get an awful lot of product produced. In this reaction however, uh, K is Cl squared divided by the concentration of chlorine and under standard temperature and pressure the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 1 times 10 to minus 38 
very, very small, which means that we've got a lot more Cl2 than we do Cl. So the uh, equilibrium lies way over to the left. We have lots of reactant and very little product produced. You will notice that there's no units for the equilibrium constant. So make sure you never put any units into the equilibrium constant. It's a constant, it doesn't have any units. So this is quite a common question that you'll be asked in your exams. To write an expression for the equilibrium constant for a given reaction. So here's a reaction here between hydrochloric acid and calcium hydroxide. It's a reversible reaction, so we can like, write an expression for the equilibrium constant. So, the products are calcium chloride and two lots of water. That gives us our CaCl2 H2O squared. Our reactants are two moles of HCl and one of calcium hydroxide. So HCl squared of our calcium hydroxide. However, that's not quite right because there's one more rule I haven't told you. And that rule is that the concentration of pure solids or water in an aqueous environment are given the value of one and should be left out from the equilibrium equation. So, if you've got a lump of, say, magnesium, that doesn't have a concentration. It's a rather meaningless quantity. Uh, so, it's left out of the equilibrium uh, equation. Now, we don't have any pure solids in this equation, but we do have water in an aqueous environment. So, here's the water, and it's in an aqueous environment. So, we should ignore the water when it comes to the equilibrium constant. So the equilibrium constant, or the expression for the equilibrium constant, should be this. Water should not appear in it. Okay, so in the exam, if you wrote that, it would be wrong. It should be written like this. Here's another example. So this is a ester being formed, the reaction between methanol and ethanoic acid to produce methoethanoate and water. Now the expression for the equilibrium constant for this reaction is methoethanoate times the water divided by the methanol times the ethanoic acid. Now this time, the H2O does appear in the equation because we've got water, but it's not in an aqueous environment. These are all just liquids. Uh, they're organic liquids. They're not things dissolved in water, which would be shown by an AQ. So because water this time is not in an aqueous environment, uh, it does uh, appear in the equilibrium constant. So it's a wee bit confusing and we need a wee bit of practice. Now, why don't you pause the tape and try and write the equilibrium constant, the expression for the equilibrium constant for this reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Okay, so, first thing we want to do is remove anything that's just a pure solid or water that's in that aqueous environment. So we've got a pure solid here, a lump of calcium carbonate. So we can ignore that for the expression of the equilibrium constant. Nothing else is a pure solid. We've got water. Is it in an aqueous environment? Yes, it is. So we ignore that as well. So the equilibrium constant would be Concentration of the products, so one mole of CaCl2 times one mole of CO2 divided by two moles of HCl, so HCl squared. 
Sometimes you'll be asked to determine the value of the equilibrium constant. Here's an example. So, the concentrations of the gases present at equilibrium are this and this. Calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction under the above conditions. So, start by writing out the expression, the equilibrium constant. So, N2 over 4 over NO2 squared. And substitute in the values for the concentrations at equilibrium. So it's 0 0.4 over 0 0.05 squared. Which comes out at 160. And remember, no units. Okay, here's one for you to try. So the esterification of methanol and ethanoic acid to form methoethanoate and water is represented by this equation. Here are the concentrations of the reactants and products at equilibrium. So calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction under above conditions. So pause the tape, try it yourself. Okay, so we start by writing the expression for the equilibrium constant. CH3COOCH3 times H2O. So H2O is included in the equilibrium constant because it's not in an aqueous environment. CH3OH, CH3COOH. Okay. Substituting the values. So CH3CO is 1.2 times 0 0.8 over 0 0.2 times 0 0.5 and that comes out at 9.6 Here's a harder example 0.2 moles of ethanol and 0.2 moles of methanoic acid are mixed with some conch sulfuric in an empty reaction vessel. After equilibrium is established, it's found that 0.15 moles of the ester has been formed. Calculate the equilibrium constant under these conditions. I'll work through this one with you, then give you another one to do. So at the start of the reaction, in the reaction vessel we had 0.2 moles of that, 0.2 moles of that, and we didn't have any of our ester or water. But during the reaction we produced 0.15 moles of the ester. Because it's in here as a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, that means if we produce 0.15 moles of the ester, we must have produced 0.15 moles of the water and 0.15 moles of the ethanol and 0.15 moles of the methanoic acid must have reacted. So, at the end of the reaction, in the reaction vessel, well, we start off with 0.2 moles of this, 0.15 of it's reacted, so we're left with 0 0.05 moles of it. Same with this. The ester will be 0 0.15 moles in the reaction vessel, there will be 0 0.15 moles of water in the reaction vessel. So, K, which is given by the ester times the water concentration, over the Alcohol times the acid, substituting the values. Now, we're substituting in the number of moles, not a concentration. But because all these uh, substances are in the same reaction vessel, they're all contained in the same volume. So uh, all of these, turn these into concentrations, we divide them all by the same volume which you just cancel out. 
So we can just put in the number of moles. So for the ester, it was 0.15. The water was 0.15. The alcohol was 0 0.05. And the acid was 0 0.05. And that comes out at 9.6 percent being constant. Oops, me bad. Uh, the answer to that calculation is of course 9.0, not 9.6. I'm afraid I can't read my own writing sometimes. Sorry about that. Anyway, on with the video. Okay, here's one slightly difficult example for you to try yourself. So, 3 moles of methanol and 5 moles of ethanolic acid are mixed with a few drops of common sulfuric. At equilibrium, we have one mole of methanol remaining. Work out the value of K. So it's the same idea but not identical to the previous example. You'll need to think. So pause the tape and try this for yourself. Right, how did you get on? So at the start, we had three moles of that, five moles of that, zero of that, and zero of that. How much reacted? Well, it doesn't actually tell us that, but what it does tell us at the end of the reaction, we've got one mole of methanol left. So that means two moles of it must have reacted. And if two moles of that reacted, it must have reacted with two moles of that, which is two moles of that, and two moles of that. So, we started off with five moles of uh, ethanolic acid, two moles reacted, so we're left with three moles. And then our reaction vessel will have two moles of that and two moles of that. So our equilibrium constant, which is concentration of the ester times the concentration of water, or the concentration of the alcohol times the concentration of the acid. Thicken the number of moles, so it was the ester was two, the water was two, the alcohol was one, and the uh, acid was three. So that's four over three, which comes out at 1.33, would be the equilibrium constant for this system. So by now you should be able to explain what is meant by the term dynamic equilibrium and you should be able to calculate the equilibrium constant K and use it to predict the position of equilibrium and or calculate the concentration of species at equilibrium.